let's talk a little bit about common sense morality and the way most people approach these questions. There are reasons, as we'll see, for actually thinking about this more systematically and developing ethical theories. But also, our common sense system of morality is actually highly sophisticated. And it's not to be scoffed at at all. So we need to understand what it's doing. This is a picture of Jonathan Haidt, who is investigating this from a psychological point of view. And has developed a view he calls social intuitionism. That's a little bit different from ethical intuitionism as, as philosophers have thought about it. We're going to look at both today. So let's start with this. His idea is that there are two cognitive processes at work when we are engaged in moral thinking. One of them is really intuition. It's very quick. It's an immediate reaction that's intimately connected with feelings, with emotions. And the other is reason, actually thinking about why we're reacting the way we are. Uh, his view is that, in general, the reasoning part has been overemphasized. That a huge amount of our moral thinking, if you want to think of it this way, is just this immediate reaction to things. And he thinks it's often motivated. Um, that is to say, the reasoning part is motivated. We really only go beyond the immediate reactions and start reasoning about it when we have to. And, he said, and here's the most controversial part. That consists mostly of post hoc justifications. That is to say, you have a quick emotional reaction to something. And then why do you reason about it? Because you're trying to justify the way you feel about it. And so there's a sense in which he is agreeing with David Hume, who said reason is not to be enslaved to the passions. He's really saying the passions are doing most of our moral thinking for us. And the explicit <coughs> reasoning we engage in is mostly to justify our passions. Now, it gives us the illusion we're being objective. Most of the time, at any rate, we're not. And if you look at what people do on the basis of morality, it really is mostly a question of going along with emotion more than reason. So he says, here's the central claim. Moral judgment is caused by quick moral intuitions. Okay? And it's followed when we have to, when it's needed, by slow ex post facto moral reason. So we get these intuitions driving our judgments. And then the reasoning comes after that if it needs to. Now, often it doesn't need to. Somebody, it turns out, has stolen something at work. We immediately react, that's wrong. And most of the time, that's fine. Right? We don't have to go beyond that. Um, but maybe we do. Maybe something, maybe somebody else says, no, no, no. They didn't steal it, actually. They just borrowed it. <laughs> or maybe somebody says, um, yeah, but look, they were facing a really terrible situation. And they put it back, and so on. Um, or maybe they say, yes, that was horribly wrong, but now what do we do about it? And those reactions can be tricky. I know of cases where people have stolen actually significant sums of money and were forgiven once the money was put back. Uh, they were, in fact, caught and not punished. But to a lot of people, that would seem like, wow, that's not much of an incentive not to steal. Right? If you steal and get caught, you have to give it back. If you steal and don't get caught, you don't have to give it back. So where's the downside? <laughs> right? um, in any event, moral judgment, he says, um, is really made with respect to, well, he thinks, a set of virtues that are held by a culture or some subculture. And so, Along with some relationship goes some virtues. Here's what it is to be a good employee. Here's what it is to be a good friend. Here's what it is to be a good whatever it is, right? And that generates these expectations and evaluations. And our emotions get aligned with those. And really, that's what drives our moral evaluations. Now, moral reasoning is really a question of our conscious mental activity that goes along trying to justify that, trying to persuade somebody else, uh, trying to actually, you might say, um, reach a moral judgment, but especially getting somebody else to reach a moral judgment who doesn't share our emotional reaction. And then moral intuition is really the foundation of it all. And that, he says, is just this sudden appearance in consciousness of a moral judgment. Okay, Something as good or bad, um, something that we like, something we dislike. We're not aware of having gone through any process of that. One of the things that Haidt has done is stress certain taboos. He's fond of giving people stories where it's actually hard to say what's wrong. We just think it's wrong. Um, and he likes to give people these kinds of things, um, violations of taboos, where we all tend to have this immediate emotional reaction, like, oh, no, that's terrible. But it's very hard for most of us to explain why it's terrible. Now, a lot of cases of moral reasoning, it's very easy to explain, right? Um, Johnny comes over and slaps Betty in the face for no reason at all. Say that's wrong. Why? Because he hurt Billy. 
It's very easy to explain that. But in some of these other cases that Height is fond of coming up with and testing people on, it's not that easy to explain. Um, like an adult brother and sister, neither of whom you know, are capable of having children, having sex with each other, um, right or wrong. Um, most of us immediately wreck wrong. But now why exactly? So it's nobody's harm. It happens once and they go on the board every way. Um, most of us are nevertheless like, mm. but right, what's behind that mean? And his point is, um, in a sense, the, the reasoning part comes after. You have to think, well, gosh, okay, what's wrong with that exactly? Um, and the point is, a lot of our moral, at least his point is, a lot of our moral reactions are like that. There are these immediate reactions, and then only later do we come up with the evaluation and the explanation of that. So here's the thought in general. There are really two systems of moral thinking. One of them is a system that's really intuitive. It's spontaneous. It's very, very quick. We have these reactions immediately. It's natural. Um, it consists of feelings, emotions. It's largely subconscious. Whatever's going on in the brain, we're not aware of what's going on. It's too quick. Now, it is private. It's a, this immediate reaction that's internal to us. Um, it's sort of informal. I can't give you rules for this. I can't say what the principles are. I just say, look, here's how I react to certain things. It can be, at times, unreliable. People can have different reactions to things. Um, but it is somewhat given. It's natural. Um, the second one, however, the second system is reasoning. This is the intuition part. The second one is the reasoning part. That's reflective. We give reasons for things. Okay, it's a rational process. We proceed according to rules and principles. It's much more predictable. On the other hand, it's pretty slow. It takes some time to think things through this way. Now, one advantage of it is that it's easy to make public. I can explain my reasoning to you. And so if you don't share my moral intuition about something, I can say, well, look, here's why I think it's this way, and I can give you reasons. If we're deliberating together as a group, it's really important to do this because it's important that we all as a group understand why we're doing this. Um, and so for public deliberation,